we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, Father of forgiveness, Father who doesn't ask us about our past, Father who makes us have a new start as a blessed man, today may my life have a start as a blessed man. May we have nothing to do with our past. May the darkness in our families depart. May the evil spirits be cast away from our children. And may we surely receive the promised blessing that will do more well. We have to surely go to heaven. We have to pass blessings to our children. At this time, may we receive all those promised blessings. May that promise that you'll help us become mine. May it come upon our families. And may we live as patriots for our country and our people. We believe that the word will be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So today, you know, when you look at those people who don't do well, they've made enemies with someone. That person, they can't do well. They make enemies and yet they live forgetting. And so they, they, they're not released. You look at these people whose problems aren't released, who aren't doing well, you look at them, they have an enemy. Even though they have enemies, because their conscience is seared, they don't know. So if I see something, I can see that person has this problem, that problem. So the parents, even if they're so evil, they're bad fruits, if you're grafted in, they have nothing to do with you. So to grumble against your parents, society, the government, you know, education, whatever grumbling, God says he'll kill you straight away. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Why would he say that? He says you have nothing to grumble about. If you now, according to God, if you are just connected to the Lord, the last step, a quarter, to, um, to be connected to the Lord, then he, yours, you can receive all blessings. So why grumble against your parents, society, the government? You don't need any of those things. All you have to do is receive your blessings. But when I look at you, you're, you can't do that. I'm the same. You know what I most fell into a trap about? I didn't have enemies, but then there were people that I didn't want to meet. So they're the enemies, those people you, that you that you cannot stand. They're they're mostly in your family. Oh, I can't stand that person. I don't want I don't want to meet them. So they're your enemies, but you don't know they're your enemies. So God wants you to be released of that. And so Matthew chapter five, as as he talks about um, enemies, he says, loving your enemy, that is faith, chapter 44, 45. So after talking about the eight blessings, he says, loving your enemy is, is faith. So if you let enemies remain, then you're living without faith. So you, what should happen according to your faith, things don't work out. So people, they, for their children's examinations to get into a good school, they pray. But if you get into a good school without doing forced out repentance, you see them later becoming the worst of evil. Because of that, they ruin their family, they ruin their lives. Even now, whatever problems arise, it's for me to repent. But you find out about that person, what they do. Someone came to me and said, Pastor, you know, when I was doing something, you know, all these people are related to this work. This person's a, a deacon. This person's an elder. But they're all problematic. You know what this is? Those people. So by the mystery of God, he makes us a new person, a blessed man to receive the Lord's help. But people who go to places without this, you know, there's no one who prays as much as shamans. Even if it rains, they, they don't leave. I, I went to pray the whole night long and I was I was sitting on the rock praying and everyone else got up. So I got up too. That's an excuse. You know, because it was raining, we went to hide. But the shamans, they just they just keep going, even without any any, you know, covers. 
So they're better than us, and that's why these gods come down to them, and they can, they can, you know, fortune tell. And but you know what? We're not even as good as a as a shaman. But why did I? Do, why was that? Because this was before I knew four step repentance. I my prayer was was lower, like a lower than them. So. Just because you come and you think God's going to hear you, no, you have to wash with the blood of Christ. But these fake churches, they're all being trained to become shamans, and that's why. Without Christ, you'll all go to hell. Colossians chapter two, verse eight. So you say, what? Those people who say, why am I not doing well? There's nothing else. You have to be able to forgive your enemies. So Matthew chapter five, God talks about the eight blessings, starting from a poor spirit and mourning. But after that, all after all of that, he says, "Loving your enemy, that is faith." And then Matthew chapter six, it talks about the prayer that the Lord teaches us. So why did he do that? So when you're not doing well, it's always because you're caught up with an enemy. So you say, "Oh, I don't have an enemy." Well, have a look at yourself. Have a look about with your in-laws, your siblings. Think about your relationship with your parents. Inside of your heart, there's surely, you know, you're thinking, "Oh, my parents, you know, thought more of my my brother," or, or the elder will think, "Oh, my parents thought more of my my younger sibling." So then, so then you say, "Oh, I don't have any," but. You make God to be a liar, Matthew chapter ten, verse thirty-six, where he says your household are, are your enemies. So, in other words, you're not realizing. But then you have a look at your spouse relationship. You say you don't have enemies. You know, when I'm counseling and I and I ask each question, they say, "Oh, you know what? I can't stand their actions." You know, it's because of our kids that we're still together. What's that saying? It's saying that they're enemies. You know, because of because they're living, they're forcing them to live together because of their kids, and now that they're old. So, is that living with an enemy or not? So you know. But then, when you ask, do you have an enemy? They say no. When you don't do four step repentance, you know, it, it, it's you can't get salvation. You ruin your children. So we're letting these things remain. How regretful is this? So those people who aren't doing well, you need to be thankful. Why? If you did well, whilst you had enemies, then you'll be used as an instrument of evil, and afterwards you'll be ruined completely. That's Proverbs chapter twenty-one, verse four. So there's nothing as scary as a, a, of a disaster as the evil doing well. So if you do well without repentance. That means scary disasters will come. Proverbs chapter twenty-one verse four. So if you build a doghouse, when it collapses, no one's going to get hurt. But a big house, when it collapses, you know all these people will will die. So not doing well, you have to be thankful. So why aren't you doing well? It's because you have enemies remaining. Matthew chapter five. God says, "I I I will give you blessings. I've given you the eight blessings, but." Because of your enemies, he's saying it's not going to happen according to your faith. So you're always tied up to these enemies. So then, what is it we have to do when we go out today? We're going to have all these enemies appear. If someone does bad things to me, you know, no one's going to like that. So, you know, someone that you can't stand, you they become an enemy inside. You think, oh, you know. What a dog! I'm not not going to have anything to do with you, and you depart. But without you realizing, you've made an enemy, and so your your things don't work out, and your children don't work out. And if you died, then you'd have to go to hell, and, and that's why. Let's find Romans chapter twelve, verse nineteen. So God says, "Enemies, you entrust them to me." You know, you you look at the young people. They they some say, "Oh, I like my father. I don't like my mother." Some people say, "Oh, I I like my mother, but I don't like my father." Some people say, "You know, I don't like either of them." In other words, they're your enemies. Who's done that? I've made it like that. And then you say you don't have enemies. Well, do you call your father often? Do you go see him? No. Oh, because I can't stand him. So that's an enemy. 
So you're not able to diagnose what an enemy is, particularly with spouses. From today, let's end this. Let's end it without any past. How good is this promise? Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. So people that you cannot stand, when you look at what they do, you think, oh, that's someone who doesn't, you know, I, I, they don't deserve anything to do with me. You know, there's so many things where you make enemies and there's so many things you've forgotten about. And then you say, oh, but time is medicine. But it's, that's, you know, when you say time is medicine, that's wrong. It makes you forget. It makes you and your children ruined but it's not medicine. So all these wrong things, you know, how you've made these enemies, what does it, what is it you should do? It says to the Lord, let's, let's read again. So let's read again. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. So because the Lord has said, you know, when you come to church, you know, when when you say broadly, you say God. Yes, that's right. But when you go to when you go to your company, you don't kneel in front of the president's door saying, please give me my wage. He's not going to give it to you. You know, let's say your wages are overdue. So it's not the president who gives you the money. It's from the account, accounts. So if you come to church, yes, it's God who helps, but you've got to go from the Lord up to Jehovah. So here it's saying our helper is the Lord. So the Lord says, entrust your enemies to me. And who is the Lord? So because you don't know this, let's find Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So it's only the Lord who helps. So you look at those people who can't receive help. They don't know if it's the Lord or, you know, when you're young, you don't know if it's ma father, mother. You just, just answer anything with, mm. but if you're in university and you call your father, mother, and you call your mother, father, you know, they'll be like, oh no, you know, our child's not even able to get married and to go get treatment and take you off to, to get treatment. Why is this? Because at university, if you if you if you call your mum dad and your dad mum, then you're not you're not normal. So as your Christian life keeps growing, you've got to be able to know you you've got to know the difference between mum and dad. So it's only the Lord who helps us. Let's read, so that we confidently say, "The Lord is my helper; I will not be afraid." What will man do to me? Amen. So what does the Lord do? So if you wander around not even knowing who your helper is, so in case it takes you too long to say Jehovah, he's, he's made it Lord, which sounds similar to give in Korean. So how much does he love you that he doesn't make you say two words? So the hardest thing when we go out is when we have enemies. So as long as we're released from our enemies, everything else will be released. So when we can't even re realize that we're tied up to enemies. Well, first of all, our enemies are our, our families. You know, those people who, who contacts, contacts their siblings or in-laws and tells them how thankful they are. Even to your parents. There was a student um, who was being interviewed and she said, oh, what have my parents done for me? So does that mean they have a good relationship or not? Who made it like that? Me. What your parents do have nothing to do with me. 
You know, let's say your parents say, yes, I gave you birth, but you're my enemy and you, they make a hook. And then you say, yeah, well, I'm the same and you make a hook. But if you say, no, I don't have enemies and you give it all to the Lord and you, you let go, then no matter how much your parents try to tie up, you're free. So let's all receive this. Let's all receive this today. Is this amen? So it's the Lord that helps me. So we all have to receive help from the Lord. So, you know, that husband was was mas- was um, massaging his wife's shoulders on the way here. So just because he's been released, I too have to be released. So if you're sick somewhere, if you don't have joy, there's something that you're holding on to. If anything, you hold on to yourself and you're like, oh, my bad destiny. So the the enemies in our lives, in our, from our past, um, when there's a problem, who do we entrust to? We have to entrust to the Lord. So when does the Lord help me? Let's find Luke chapter 1 verse 28. It's we have to receive grace. When we receive grace, that's when the Lord helps us. And that's why churches, they all say, receive grace. But the pastor, if they haven't even done four-step repentance and they say receive grace, 100% that's a lie. Pastor, you have to do four-step repentance to receive grace. You're not even doing the mystery of Christ. How can you lie and say that? You know, we should be saying that. But instead you go, oh, yes, I will receive grace. So they're the same liars. So how can you do well? And that's why the European church... 2,000 years after Jesus, and they're all ruined. Why do the things to be ruined? It's only the Lord that helps us. So the enemies that you have, you have to entrust to the Lord. So it's only the Lord that you can entrust you, and it's only the Lord who helps us. So when do you meet the Lord? When you receive grace. Let's read. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Amen. So, you you who have received grace. So, if you've received grace, it means the Lord who helps you is with you. If the Lord who helps you is with you, then what happens? It says you have peace. So, without receiving grace, you don't have peace. If you have received grace, then the Lord who helps you is with you. So, if the Lord is with you, then you can entrust all your enemies. You can entrust all your worries and and anxieties, and he will help me he, to the point where I go to he. I can go to heaven, and for my children to do well. That's why we're here to receive this. Let's read again. And coming in, he said to her, "Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you." Amen. Is this amen? So only the Lord will take your enemies. So not just that, all things, all things he will bear. And that's why Psalms chapter 68 verse 19, it says to entrust every day to the Lord, not to Jehovah, but to the Lord. So if the Lord is with me and he helps me and he's responsible for my worries and my enemies, and he is the one that repays my enemies directly. So then that means small things, big things, he bears them all. So when is the Lord with me? When I've received grace. When I've received grace, that's when I have peace. So if you ask me or my wife and we say, do it if your heart's at peace. Is that right or wrong? It's right. So why do the things where you don't feel peace and then later it becomes a headache? So it's me that didn't know. You know, because if you lie so much, when you lie, you don't even you don't even feel anything when you lie. But because you've lived so long without peace, you don't even know what peace is. But 
Where do you, if you have grace, the Lord is, if you have peace and you have grace, if you have grace and the Lord is with you. So, how do we get this, how do we get this grace? Let's find Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It comes from four step repentance. So, even today, if you have an enemy, quickly do four step repentance and change it. Entrust to the Lord. When you go out and as you're living, there's someone that you cannot stand. You know, there's something that makes you so upset. Don't,、uh, you have an enemy, don't spit at them or grumble. But by four step repentance, quickly entrust the Lord. Then you will do well. The Lord will help you. Who is the Lord? Well, when Jonah, who was, who was almost dead in the belly of the fish, when he gave thanks to the Lord and then cried out, To Jehovah, everything worked out. So, to receive answers, you have to be with the Lord. Otherwise, before that, you can't. And what is that? That is receiving grace. So, let's read. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace. Amen. So, if we just summarize this, You know, whatever problem, disease, if you're not doing well, there's surely an enemy that you're hold on to, holding on to. You know, you could be holding on to yourself. You say, Oh, I have a bad destiny, and you just want to live in, in, whatever, in, in whichever way. And so you've made an enemy of your own self. There are people like that who make it so that they can't be released. And then even when you go out, Oh, yesterday I received grace on Sunday, and now I have, I have a new start as a, as a blessed man, a new man. But then, as soon as you step out, the first thing is you step on, you meet this person, and, they, and they're like, it's like, step, it's like a stone that's. And so then you curse. You know, in Korea, we have curses that they don't even have anywhere in the world. This is a blessing because it means we can repent. If we didn't have any curses, then we'd have nothing to repent of. But because we have a lot of things to repent of, that's what's blessed. So even though you do something, even though you have these problems, the key is to receive grace, to say that sin is mine, and then to entrust to the Lord. Let's do more well according to our desires, even if we have enemies, to do more well. From today, a new start. Is this our man? So, the person next to you, no matter how much you can't stand them, no. It's it, it, there for you to receive blessings. So, there's no enemies. There's no one to hate. There's no one that you don't want to meet. As long as we can do this, then by the Lord's help, we'll be, have a new start as a blessed man. So, let's say to the person next to us, let's have a new start. Let's have a new start. So, elders, let's have a new start. In the back, let's have a new start. In the middle, let's have a new start. Let's have a new start. And in Seoul, let's have a new start. We, it will happen. So, what is it to receive grace? It's to become a blessed man. So, all the things that don't work out to entrust to the Lord, and all I have to do is sing praises and go excitedly. So, Let's entrust everything. Let's receive, the gra receive grace. Let's entrust to the Lord. You know, if we try to go to God, He'll be like, you know, you're trying to deposit something and, and you go to the loans department. They're going to be like, take it, take it. And you're like, this is strange. We, it's only the Lord who bears everything. And he's responsible for, for everything. So let's have a new start with victory. Let's call upon the Lord three times and let's entrust everything. Lord, 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 by the blood of Christ, may we do four step repentance and may we entrust with thanksgiving. Please bear everything. Father God, My life may have a new start as a blessed man. May we continuously have a new start. 